Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to mine Digibyte coins. So let's get going. All right, so this is the Digibyte website, pretty cool website. Uh, I'll uh, leave it to you to check it out. Now, if uh, we want to mine Digibyte coin, uh, we're going to need somewhere to store it. So similar to my previous video where I showed you how to buy Digibyte, you will need to install a wallet, uh, somewhere to store your coins. So we'll go over here to wallets, and there's quite a few wallets that are available for Digibyte, for the different platforms, and some of the other uh, types of wallets that are out there. So uh, I'm just going to demonstrate the desktop wallet. Uh, you'll just click download here and save and uh, you can just drop it in your desktop or uh, drop it in your downloads folder and then just double click and run okay and after you've done that you're just gonna click next let it install in the default location and click next and uh, then you can just let it run now you'll notice uh, that it will show up in your uh, Windows apps. Uh, if you check over here in D, you'll see uh, Digibyte Core is there. And you'll want to use the 64-bit uh, full core, not the testnet. So while we're waiting for the Digibyte Core wallet to load up, I can, oh, oh, there we go. All right, so as you can see, uh, I already had a little Digibyte in there and I didn't even get a sync uh, screen because I uh, recently synced up so but you'll see the sync screen and it will take quite a while all right and uh, let's say we want to try the ledger nano we uh, need to go to our app ledger manager and we need to install support for the digibyte cryptocurrency so uh, just along the side here, they have all the different apps that you can use for supporting the different cryptocurrencies, and there's Digibyte. So we just click the down arrow, and then we will need to confirm on the device. Oh, I guess I had uh, done something before, uh, so uh, it didn't need a second confirmation. I've been doing a little practicing, gang. All right, so, but now we can see that uh, the Digibyte app is now on my ledger. Isn't that cool? And if we click both buttons and go into Digibyte, then uh, we'll close the uh, manager and launch the uh, Ledger Wallet Bitcoin. The Ledger Wallet Bitcoin app uh, handles all of the alt, alt currencies. All right, and you'll see there that it's got uh, Digibyte and uh, it holds Digibyte, and this is how you can access your Digibyte. See, it's got DGB up here. I uh, got a little bit in there. All right, so now we've got two different wallets, and it doesn't really matter which wallet you use. There are several choices there on the Digibyte website. The important thing is if you're going to run a miner, you're going to need a receiving address. And so let's say we want to use the Digibyte core. We just click this little plus up here, and uh, we choose Request Payment and it generates an address for us. So let's take that address. Uh, we'll just copy the address into our clipboard and then we can go over here to new on our desktop and just put a little uh, text file over there. Now it's not really insecure to save this on your desktop because we're just gonna put the receiving address in there. There is no danger in sharing that receiving address with anyone, okay? That is the public address of this wallet that people use to send coins to you or that you use to send coins to yourself. And let's try it over here on the Ledger Nano. We could do the same thing. Uh, we'll just uh, click this. And there you see there's a Digibyte address. In this case, uh, we'll just copy and uh, paste 
Now, uh, we don't need two addresses for mining, but I'm just giving you a demo that, uh, you know, you can decide which uh, address you might want to mine to, right? All right, so now we've got our addresses. Now, once we've got the addresses, we can close the wallets, right? We don't need the wallets open to send cryptocurrency to them, all right? That's kind of a common misconception that you need to have the wallet open in order to transfer funds into it. The funds are on the blockchain. And if funds get moved from one blockchain address to another, that occurs on the blockchain that is uh, the distributed ledger of any particular coin. The wallet doesn't have to be open. So the next time you launch the wallet, it will uh, show you uh, whatever transactions have come in since you had the wallet open. So you can mine for months, years, and never have to open your wallet. And then uh, just open your wallet whenever if you need access to the coins. All right. So you don't have to have the wallet open to mine. So now we're going to do the mining. Uh, let's go over to a cool site called YIMP, Y-I-I-M-P dot E-U. And uh, it has several mining pools that you can use, uh, join, to mine coins. So, uh, and it has Digibyte. So if we look down here in coins, we've got DGB, right? And it gives you uh, all of the parameters that you're gonna need to mine Digibyte. And it also gives you uh, the parameters you need over here uh, for the address of the uh, mining pools, all right? So we're missing one little component. We need some mining software. So uh, the software that you're gonna need here is CC Miner. So I'm gonna open another tab. We're gonna go over here to CC Miner. Right. And we want the latest version. It's on GitHub. All right, currently it's uh, version 2.3 and we want the Windows version. So uh, we're gonna download it. We'll just click this link here. Now you'll notice that, uh, I'll throw it on the desktop today. You'll notice that this is a .7z uh, compressed file. So it may not work with uh, the Windows native decompression or the Windows, uh, or I'm sorry, or the WinZip decompression. You All right, so you might need to run over here and get uh, 7z. You can just Google it, and you'll want the 7zip.org. Uh, it's free open source software. Uh, it's great software for uh, compressing and decompressing. So I already have it on my computer. You just download it and install it, just like I showed you with the other one. All right, so here we go. We've got our CC miner, and we're going to decompress it. Uh, I'm going to choose 7z and extract to the same a folder with the same name as the file. All right, that decompresses, and then we open it up. And there's our miner. Now we're gonna have to configure the miner before we uh, can start mining coin. But before we do that, you might wanna double check to see if your virus alert software is going to flag it. Cryptocurrency mining software is often flagged as malware. So what you're gonna need to do is add it uh, to your list of exclusions, depending on which mining, I'm sorry, depending on which um, antivirus or malware software you're running. So let me just uh, show you real quick. I'm going to double click this, and you'll notice that my uh, malware came up and blocked it, All right? So uh, what we need to do is for malware bytes, now you may have other types of software, so I'm going to leave it in your capable hands. Uh, but you will need to add it to your list of exclusions. So we go to view quarantine. All right, and that's the software right there. I need to take it off quarantine and put it back where it belongs because you'll notice here in the folder, it's gone, right? It got moved. So uh, we're gonna put it back by restoring it, right? And there it is, it's back again. Now, before we try to run it again, we're gonna need to add it to our list of exclusions. So we'll go over here to settings and uh, there's a few tabs here you'll want to be in exclusions and we're going to add an exclusion right and we're going to choose exclude file or folder choose next and we're just going to select that file that got uh, quarantined 
uh, now that it's back where it belongs. We'll go into the folder, we'll click on the file and choose open, and there it is. It's the, the name of the file is ccminor-x64, we'll click OK, and now it has been added to our list of exclusions right there at the bottom. All right. Uh, that's uh, one thing you can, uh, that's one way to do it. Uh, you may have different malware protection, so, uh, but the process is pretty similar. All right, so now let's double click it again. And you'll see that it just kind of runs and does its thing, but it's really not configured to do anything. Um, it's connecting to uh, the YIMP server by default but it's not really uh, mining anything that I need, right? I need to configure it to send <laughs> coins to me, right? That's what I want. So uh, let's close this out. We've got some bat files here that uh, we can use as an example. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one we use. Um, I can use this one, all right? Because but we do want it to stay a bat file. So what I'm going to do is uh, change the name of it. I'm not going to mine uh, XMR here. So I'll just change the name of it to uh, run. Come on, bullet. There we go. I'm going to change it to run DGB or Digibyte. OK, we want it to be uh, meaningful, right? And so we just open this up. We'll choose Edit. Okay, and you'll see there, uh, it's pretty much set up for us, but uh, we need to make some changes, all right? So the first thing we need to do is change the algorithm, right? So let's go over here to YIMP and look at the algorithm we need for uh, Digibyte, right here. S-K-E-I-N, -E all right? So we'll go back over here to our, let's uh, scooch it down a bit so we can see what we're doing. All right, so uh, S-K-E-I-N is our, uh, and then we can look over here too for a little guidance. All right, the A, I don't think I need the A, but I'll leave it in there. The A switch. Actually, I'll just take it out. All right, so we're going to put S-K-E-I-N, all right? Oh, actually, I believe that A st stood for algorithm. <laughs> so the algorithm is S-K-E-I-N. Now, the uh, address looks good. So we got the stratum plus TCP, uh, and but this is not correct here. We need a YIMP, all right? So let's do that yimp.eu copy and we'll take that all right so we've got the correct address there and now the port we need the right port for our digibyte that would be port 4933 all right and I believe we've got everything we need except <laughs> the address, all right? So we're just gonna take this out. All right, so uh, the address of the wallet will go here. We took out the one that was uh, put in there as an example for us. So what do we put here? We go back over to our uh, text file and we choose one or the other. We don't want both, we just want one. So I'm, uh, for demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the uh, desktop core wallet. And the reason I'm gonna do that is if you're gonna mine, if you're gonna have your computer mine, and uh, you turn on your miner and you let it mine, it's nice to have the, the core wallet running uh, on your desktop so that you can see the progress of what's happening. Uh, you know, if you decide to mine, uh, overnight and you come in the next morning um, it's kind of a hassle to hook up the ledger and double you know go through all that process just to get uh, to check your balance right now it might be a good idea once you've accumulated some digibyte to switch transfer it to the ledger but uh, for our day-to-day -day mining let's stick with the uh, 
mining, uh, pff, let's stick with the core wallet. All right, so I'm going to take that uh, address from the core wallet, and I'm just going to paste it right in there. There. Now we've got everything we need uh, to mine Digibyte using uh, the YIMP address. All right. We've got the uh, right algorithm, we've got the uh, right port, and we've got the right address, and we have our wallet address here. All right, so we'll save that. And you'll notice here that it's still got that little uh, bat icon. You don't want this file. Uh, if you try to edit it on your own and you try to save it in the wrong way, it might turn into one of these like uh, generic icons we don't want that we want it to stay a bat file uh, with the right extension and that's why I just chose to edit one that was already there so let's double click and see what happens alright so you'll notice here that it identified my uh, graphics card and it's just mining away like crazy now keep in mind uh, that before you see any rewards, it's going to take six hours at least. You might want to just give it a full 24 hours before you're going to start to see any uh, uh, funds come into the wallet. Okay. So uh, what I usually do is uh, I don't like to run my miner when I'm live streaming or when I'm playing games or anything like that. But uh, you can run your miner at night if you want to. Um, why not let your computer earn a little extra money while it's, you know, just sitting around? And this is uh, a graphics card miner. It's, my, it's using your graphics card to mine. And this particular trick, this little process, doesn't work with Radeon cards. Uh, you have to use some other method for Radeon cards. I guess I closed down that core wallet. So, like I said, uh, Digibyte Core will be the wallet that you'll see the funds coming into eventually. Yeah, that's the address there. Um, you can you see it. You can also see it uh, if you do this. If you choose edit instead of open, you can see the configuration file and just confirm that it is this, the right address. Okay, so we can just confirm that uh, this is an address of this wallet and we will be receiving Digibyte into this address. All right, guys, so uh, happy mining. Uh, I hope this wasn't too complicated for you, but it is a pretty easy and uh, way without running out and buying a bunch of equipment. Just use, uh, if you got a halfway decent graphics card in your computer, uh, this is a breeze to set up and uh, earn a little passive income. So I would like to mention before I go that I have a live stream every Friday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the live Q&A from L.A. I hope that you'll join me and uh, throw out any questions that you may have. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there is a bell that you can click that will allow you to be notified whenever I post a new video. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.